Thursday. We are in Hope, BC. So we made it here last night. Lots of parking left. This whole back row almost there was like me and three other guys in the back row by the time I got here. So it eventually filled up, I guess, but it's already started to empty out. So we're gonna get going here. Off to Surrey, and then Langley, and then we already have, uh, well, we don't have the reload info, but I was told that we have a reload tomorrow in Richmond, B.C. So, we have a couple of regulars down there, so, I don't know if it's one pick, or they said singular, your pickup, on Friday, in Richmond, so, hopefully one, straight back to Winnipeg, but we'll see. Trying to clean up the windshield, it's better, but not a great job. That squeegee sucked. Use this really, uh, they didn't use like a harder wood on the long squeegee pole, so couldn't get any pressure on the uh, rubber side of the uh, squeegee to properly dry it off. Well, they put soap in the squeegee water. You really don't need to do that. Throw a little bit of bug juice in there. And, uh, or just a bucket of bug juice. Would be much better. Establish that we are in the proper spot, I think. They're a little unclear about that. So, but, so I'm just waiting. Uh, I have to wear the stupid vest and hard hat. There's nothing but concrete and rebar around here. 
I'm sorry, unless this is magic. It's gonna crash my head if something falls, so. Uh, I think steel-toed boots were required, but I don't have a pair with me, so. Don't tell them. I'm serious, I'll cut you. Um, yeah, so now we just wait. To get out of here is gonna be a pain. It was tight getting in here. So what I plan to do is to slide my tandems forward. I should do that now while I'm waiting for them. I love the sliders on this truck, on this, on these trailers. these guys. It's uh, air driven, no handle. Pull that out. The trick is you have to uh, make sure you dynamite the trailer. Cut the air supply, otherwise uh, that valve won't stay out. Alright, so we're unloaded. Again, I just finished sliding my tandems here. Alright, so can't leave yet because truck in my way. <laughs> so the nose of that truck is in my way and I can't make the turn, so he's going to be about a half hour. The people just walking around and moving their arms, they're kind of living dead here. But I'm going to get in a better position so I don't lose the opportunity to get out of here when I do have an opportunity to.
just like that, we're out. Hey, we're just on 200th Street in Langley. Pretty close to our delivery. The closed one or the far one? The far one. Okay. Stay over to the right side if you can too. Okay. I'll, that way. I'll crack the doors now, that way I can get close to the building. Alright, we are empty. And gonna go find parking somewhere. I don't know where though. But 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 but, but. we need to find parking. Alright, it's uh, the end of Thursday, so we got a parking spot here in Langley at the uh, Chevron Carlock. So we're just going to take the rest of the day off. And, uh, see you guys tomorrow when we reload in Richmond. Yeah. Uh, one pickup going all the way back to Winnipeg. So that's not ready till afternoon though. So I will see you tomorrow afternoon then. Alright. Our, uh, good morning, afternoon, whatever. We're in Langley. Just getting ready to go. Uh, Sewer so vehicle inspection and logbook and everything. So we're going to go to Surrey, uh, Richmond, pardon me, and uh, go do our pickup. Just getting on to Bridgeport. This across the river to the airport section, and then we will uh, try to find our street. Here. We made it, we found it, we're in the dock already, they're in the trailer already. So they're tipsy, maybe you can see here. I'll prop you up against the handle. I'm drinking too much. So they shouldn't take too long. And I don't know how much we're getting. Uh, it was supposed to be to uh, pick up and then uh, for two places in Winnipeg. But uh, uh, I think that got down, cut down to one, so I don't know if it's a full trailer for one or a partial trailer or almost a full trailer. I don't know. Not my department to know. So I take what they got and then I get the heck back to Winnipeg. We're gonna stop it. Alright, we are loaded up. It's a full trailer. One stop in Winnipeg, but I'm just dropping out the yard. We get back. I need next Saturday off. So Next week will be a short week, which is okay. I've been busy lately, so... Markers and exits are in kilometers. 
Anyway, so they can't process payment. Canadian Flying J's suck. Holy Christ. They can't sell fuel. They can't, their entire network's down. I can't freaking believe Flying J. Well, I can because this is what you come to expect from Flying J. Completely unprepared to do business. These guys are clowns. Absolute clowns. I can't leave here until I get fuel. Freaking morons. They can't give me an ETA. They're like, it could be 10 minutes, it could be a half hour. It's like, no, it's probably going to be all freaking evening because it's flying chain. So I'm going to see if their freaking showers work because evidently their pumps and all their employees do. So, what a bunch of clowns. All right, so we're staying here in Hope because they still can't process payments. And I need fuel and death. So, another wonderful, wonderful experience with the Canadian Flying Day. Good morning, Saturday morning. So I guess, well, not good morning, but morning. Uh, just grab fuel here at this averagely run Canadian Flying J, which means they're a train wreck and I'm prepared to do business. They uh, got their card issue sorted out enough. You can buy diesel, but not deaf at the pumps. So I overpaid for bottles. So there's another $45 for five gallons of uh, death. So, the thing with the bottles is that uh, they're about six bucks more for a bottle than the equivalent bulk at the pump. So, Lucky Flying J, I've had to buy four bottles. And the bottles that they sell, the Canadian Flying J's, the, not, the hoses, they have the, the air vent right on the hose, so it leaks, and so it leaks all over my hand. And the hose is a, it's not just like a, a crinked hose, it has a straight piece in the middle, so it's crinked by the end, crinked by the bottle, and then a straight piece in the middle, so it's almost impossible to keep it in the uh, tank, because you can't put any, take any pressure on the hose, because it has two separate places where it bends individually, so. I'm assuming when they had that horrible setup, they designed that hose, they're like, that's just going to frustrate people, who's going to buy that? And then they hear a knock on the door, Fly J! Fly J! I guess their spidey senses tingled, and they said they're all over that, so you make those bottles with those hoses and we'll, we'll store them, we'll stock them, and annoy every driver, because that seems to be their mission. Because if this is just by accident, then they're stupidest people on the face of the planet, so. All right, so we're coming up uh, to Kamloops. We're just hitting uh, the first uh, two brake checks that are in succession. So we kind of go down the hill, do this brake check, go down the hill, and then right before cam loops in the scale, there's another brake check. So, okay, we're at the, uh, we're just leaving the second uh, brake check area. And the scale is closed. So says the sign, so we're gonna go around the bypass lane. Uh, I was expecting it to be open. During the day, I've noticed these two scales are usually open. And then sometimes at night. Okay, we're by, uh, da, 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 da. Between Revelstoke and Golden. Just go through some tunnels here. They put these up so we don't get crushed by rocks. Just went through Golden, so this is the hill on the east side that we're gonna go over. A little slow going, but four lane just cut off, so I do love when those cut off. Everybody tries to race you. Earlier today, I wasn't filming, unfortunately. Uh, motorcycle was trying to pass a whole bunch of people and couldn't get back in. So we passed each other, both of us in my lane. So that was awesome. Uh, I had a bit of a shoulder to go on to, and I took it. And just hoped. <laughs> Came around the corner, and they were kind of there, so I kind of put the shoulder as much as I could. A 
couldn't get onto the gravel going highway speeds. Otherwise, I'd take out a whole line of cars if I lost control. So, I don't know what the hell he is thinking. That's a panic situation because, uh, yeah, you have to kind of make a decision. Could you put a risk? Well, that's all you can do. If I bite the, I bite the uh, gravel, I mean, I might just go into the ditch. I mean, it's a hell of a ditch. Uh, or I might come back up onto the pavement and go head on into the whole line. It was like a line of 50 cars. There was one camper that decided he was going to go with 50. Let's hold off the whole show. That guy tried to force the pass coming up, coming up to a curve. So let him in because they were bumper to bumper tailgating and uh, he had no plan once he got out there how to get back in. Make a stupid spot to do it. Alright, we're just getting to Calgary and we'll probably make it to Speed Creek tonight. We'll be late. But we'll make her. Good morning. It is Sunday. So current. Uh, that's where I made to last night. So we're gonna take off, go find coffee. I'm gonna wipe the windshield because going through the prairies, so I'd have to squint to see. But uh, I did a walk around already. Well, the vehicle stuck and everything, but. It's not too bad, but dirty. Look at that windshield. That's how you know you're going through the prairies. Scrub the windshield, but I don't know why guys park like that. He has to back towards the pumps. That's dangerous. I mean, you can't back into a spot, and there's plenty of room here. This isn't even one of those things, well, if he was tired, he didn't want to do a alley dock back or whatever. You can spin around and come straight and hit these spots. This is an easy place to get in and out of. Get people like that who can't park, who can't back the truck, and then uh, and then he starts backing towards the pumps and stuff. I mean, okay, we're here in Moose Jaw. Hopefully, getting fuel and death. They had DEF and it worked and uh, third time's a charm. So we'll grab 213 gallons. Let's write down and then filled up my DEF tank. was broken and no coffee. So I got the necessities, so alright, we are in Headingley. Almost home. I'm gonna go to the yard, drop the truck, can go home. Nice little run. We left Monday. Delivered Tuesday. Then out to BC and back it's Sunday. 